So just to give you an overview, what I'm gonna do right at the very beginning uh, in this first module is I'm gonna teach you um, just the basics of how to do focusing. Focusing is a, a very elegant way of finding your way into the body and, and listening to what the body has to say. And because Jenlin discovered this in, in the course of some other research, which I'll tell you about in, in, a little, in a little bit, he wasn't sure if this was a unique ability or something that could be taught. And the steps of focusing come out of um, his discovery of how to teach focusing in a systematic way. So that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to give you a crash course in focusing. And uh, then we'll, in the second module, I'm going to turn my attention directly to the book, Let Your Body Interpret Your Dreams, which is going to be the, the main touchstone for this course. And I'm going to give you an overview of this profound little book, which offers an experiential approach to dreams based on uh, Jenlin's unique philosophy, uh, which is he calls a process model. Um, but not limited to any single method or theory. So he does incorporate some uh, Jungian ideas, some Freudian ideas, some ideas from Gestalt, as well as incorporating his own theory. But he really doesn't feel that you as a dream worker need to know any of that. I'm just gonna bring in some pieces of it because it's, it's part of what makes Jenlin's approach unique. Uh, but, but mostly he makes, Jenlin makes dream work accessible to all and offers these little pearls of win wisdom and mini examples of how to make sense of a dream by listening to your body. So something that anybody can do and anybody can do for another. So Jenlin um, wove together a whole bunch of different theories into a list of questions that he devised as a way for somebody just kind of to pick up the list or to memorize the, the list because they they're grouped into, into threes and he makes them easy to remember and just kind of, you know, a way to interview your dreams, beginning with associations and uh, going into different experiential ways to um, enter your dreams. And so I'll talk about the 16 questions and the, the way that he suggests we use them. Some of them maybe aren't going to be used so much now. There's some that feel a little bit dated. Um, but I then I'm going to spend the, the second half of the course really honing in on my favorite three questions. They're all in one group that he calls exploring characters, but really it's the way to get to an embodied experience of, of dreaming. So the first one is an idea that Jenlin calls finding the help in a dream. And I think this is one of his greatest contributions to dream work, the idea of finding and embodying what he would call the life force in a dream. He said that every dream comes with something new and some way to help you to um, realize it or to um, metabolize it if it's a challenge. And that um, the whole point of dream work is to find and embody this life force. The final module is going to be about rescripting dreams and nightmares, allowing the dream to continue or what you would call dreaming the dream onward. And this particular uh, way of re-entering a dream, I think really uh, kind of underscores the fact that, that I've come to, that dreaming is happening all the time, and that our dreams are alive, and they continue on even when we're not working with them. So sometimes dreaming the dream on is maybe even just catching up to where the dream is. And it's also this idea of, of revisiting and allowing the dream to continue is really a central feature of working with nightmares. And it's been very well documented in research that we can really help somebody with nightmares by dreaming the dream forward. So I'll talk about that and again, give you some examples. And then woven all through it, I'm gonna pull some examples from uh, Jenlin's book. I'm gonna talk about different ways that uh, focusing oriented dream work has been advanced since 1986 when Jenlin originally wrote this book. He did add a few pieces himself, some simplifications of bias control, for example, because in the book, it's a little bit complicated the way he explains it. So he does revise it. And, and when I talk about bias control or anything to do with this book, I will always bring in the more, most up-to-date uh, thinking about it including my own. I've written a number of articles 
and chapters on uh, focusing and dream work. And so I've really been steeped in it. And I will also weave in his philosophy, which is a little bit dense and a little bit, um, you kind of have to do a double take a little bit when you first hear it. But I feel like it really does help to understand what dreaming is. His philosophy does really have a way of, of making you think a little bit differently about the process of dreaming. So I do hope that you really enjoy this journey as much as I have. I've really spent my um, career lifetime learning and, and coordinating these very um, complementary approaches. And I will share um, as much as I can about how you can really understand these, these processes of Jungian dream work and embodied focusing oriented dream work and how they work so beautifully together. <laughs>